Imagine, if you will, a world where Nick's editor, uh, me, decided to post this trade video a day before the one that came out last time, this one here, up in the corner. This video is in fact a prequel to the one that you saw last time. This video takes place before that trade. I'm just the one who decided to post it today. All right, let's roll the intro. I'm telling you right now, this is not going to be a fun one to post on YouTube. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another live trading video. Today we're looking at NZD JPY and I'm currently long on this currency pair and in this video I'm going to step you through a trade of mine start to finish on a real account. No nonsense. You can see the full results and the thought process in one of my trades. So let's jump in first with the technical analysis of why I just picked up an NZD JPY long. The first thing you'll notice is that price has currently just pulled back off of a high. And notably, this is actually a higher high. If we just do a quick trend analysis, what we can see is that we do in fact have some higher lows and higher highs coming into this market. Most technical chartists are going to consider that an uptrend, right? When you have higher lows and higher highs. So I noticed that and I was like, okay, well, NZD JPY trending well to the upside and a bit of a pullback here this morning here in the New York session, we saw the, the, uh, the Kiwi against the Japanese yen pull back pretty aggressively. And we notably came down to an area where I found this area to be pretty significant looking left. You have a lot of wicks over here, a lot of support. This thing ping ponged underneath, uh, did a little bit of a, what, what some chartists might call a Wyckoff spring where it triggers underneath uh, support, grabs a bunch of stops and flies to the upside. So either ways, despite what you wanna call it to me, this area is somewhat significant. And as we pulled back into that area and we started to see a bit of rejection, I actually decided to go ahead and pick up a long position. So we have, again, the overall uptrend, a pullback into a general area of support. And one thing to add that's very important here is we have a stop loss in place underneath the previous lows, but not immediately underneath, but with a little bit of extra room. So. The idea behind the trade, uh, again, stop loss wise, is we should see this area hold. And if not this area, I'll give it a second chance around this area, 85.45, let's call it. So 85.45, both of these areas are areas which I think we should see a positive reaction on the Kiwi against the Japanese yen. And if we don't, then I'll take a small loss of $800 on this account. And I say small, uh, I'm not trying to, you know, gaslight people who have small accounts, but this is a small amount of trading uh, losses on this particular trading account that I'm working with. So there is context there. So with that said, that's the technical basis. We, I generally like the idea of, of looking to see this. And if we can see a pushback to the highs or perhaps even beyond, I'll look to trail stops and try and make some money, which hopefully if this video goes well, if the trade goes well, uh, you'll see that portion of the trade as we go along. So next up, let's talk a little bit about the fundamental bias and why I actually decided to be long oriented on this, uh, this currency pair. This is the A1 Edge Finder. It is our market scanning tool that helps us find trading setups. And if we take a look at this, what it does is it scans a whole bunch of different key metrics, you know, the commitment or traders report, retail sentiment, seasonality, trend, etc. And overall, we get a plus three score. This helps to derive a bias of a bullish uh, position. You can see our little speedometer there. And basically the idea here is that when we combine all these different factors, we get a bullish reading for the NZD JPY, enough so to get a long trade uh, bias going. On top of that, if we take a look at some of the metrics, just to break them down, for example, you can see like seasonality, right? Seasonality here. The month of November is historically uh, a positive month for this currency pair. So if we know historically, like this pair tends to rise during November, that can be information we use to our advantage with a trading setup. And that's exactly what the edge finder does. It combines a bunch of factors and allows you to trade that. Uh, based on that. So if you guys would like access to the edge finder, that will be linked down below in the description. And what I'll do now is uh, I'll pause the video, give this some time to play out, and uh, we'll come back once things either hit stop loss, if this trade goes poorly, or if we're able to catch a little bit of a rally here, I'll look to uh, update my, my stop loss, etc. I'm telling you right now, this is not going to be a fun one to post on YouTube. <laughs> Okay, guys, so uh, I'm going to be completely honest with you. This one uh, made me look like an absolute 
fool in the markets. And if you trade long enough, I promise you, uh, you can relate to this. If you if you don't already, you will. Uh, it is so, so incredibly frustrating when this happens to you. But let me break down what happened. I ended up losing on this trade, uh, so unfortunately, because the market literally just said hello to my stop loss before running back the other direction. And so I already know this is gonna be a tough one to post on YouTube, but I'm gonna do it anyways. I, I have been doing this long enough. I'm confident enough in my approach. I know that this is going to happen sometimes, but it still doesn't stop it from being frustrated, even after uh, being frustrating to me after years of doing this, whenever this happens to me, I can't lie. It's a little bit of an annoying thing when you get into a trade and the market does what you were thinking it would do, right? Uh, it, it moves in my favor, looks great, comes back to that trade. In hindsight, 2020, I shoulda, coulda, woulda moved my stop loss to break even. Uh, truthfully, I'm, I'm regretting that right now. Those are some of the emotions that I'm going through as I watch this thing run away without me. At this point, this trade would have been up 1600 bucks probably, let's call it. That's about two to one from where I initially entered my trade. So not only did I miss out on the $1,600 profit that I'd be floating right now, but I actually took an $800 loss. So what happened? Well, look at this. It nailed my stop loss just underneath support before rallying higher. And I know very commonly what people will say is, Nick, you were liquidity. You should have moved your stop wider. The problem is, right? And I talk about this in my videos because I, I know somebody will relate to this. It's so uh, tempting when you're trading to change your strategy because of that one time the market made you feel foolish. Right? It's very tempting to say, you know, well, next time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this stop loss wider so that the market can't, uh, can't do this to me next time, right? I'm gonna beat it next time. The problem is no matter what you do, you're gonna be, you're gonna be like, um, it's, you know, the market's like, you know when they, they say like dance, dance boy and they shoot your feet, you know, in like those Western movies or whatever and the, the guy's like dancing his feet or whatever to try and avoid getting shot in the foot. That's like trying to train, change your strategy every, uh, time the market does something a little bit that you don't like, right? So as this happens to me, sure, I could make the argument like, oh, well, next time I'm just gonna widen my stop loss. But next time the market may genuinely truly reverse and I'll take way more of a stop loss than I needed to, right? So I've had plenty of times where I place a stop like this and it's a, a saving grace, right? The market ends up doing one of these where it just completely falls apart underneath support. And, um, you know, I'm very thankful for my stop loss in those moments. But when moments like this happen, it's very tempting to say, well, next time I'm going to change my strategy. I'm going to change my plan so that the market can't make me feel like a fool, right? And do one of these to me. The reason I'm showing this on YouTube is because I think this might be relatable to a lot of traders. Um, I certainly know that this is a frustrating experience. It's probably worse than just, you know, the loss itself, I don't really mind. It's the, I lost money right before I was completely correct about this idea on NZDJPY. But the truth is, when you really look at it and say, was I really right about this trade? The genuine answer is no, I wasn't right about this trade. I caught a good move here, don't get me wrong, but I wasn't right in the sense that I didn't have the perfect setup and trade, right? Uh, that's a that's a, another temptation is to say, I knew it was gonna do that, I just got stopped out before. Well, then your entry might have been off, you know? And in this case, maybe my entry was off, maybe, um, you know, maybe my, uh, my my idea to to not trail stops was a mistake. But you know, if you do kind of think that way, and you constantly say like, next time I'm going to change this, next time I'm going to change this, you're if you're just changing your strategy forever, you'll never be consistent at anything. Okay, and I think that that's a very very important lesson, even when this happens, to acknowledge. If you change your strategy every time the market makes you feel foolish you will never be consistently trading the same strategy. I don't care if you are trading with, with Wyckoff methods, whether you're trading trend lines, Fibonacci, moving average, smart money concepts, um, whatever, price action solely, whatever you're trading, MACD, it doesn't matter. Every single entry style has moments where it looks stupid and feels foolish. The problem is you gotta pick one. And if you're gonna pick one, you gotta accept the flaws. So I bought on a retest, on a pullback, I think the entry was fine, just didn't do as much as I wanted it to do. So we're out, thanks for watching. That's another trade video. Sorry, my phone is uh, ringing. Um, 
And that is, uh, that's gonna settle it. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. See you next time. It looks like you made it to the end of one of my videos. Thank you so much for supporting my content. It really means the world to me. And down below in the description, I put together some of my best resources for aspiring traders who are looking to improve. I've got some free downloads that could help you, some broker recommendations. And if you'd like to join our Discord or get access to some of our trading software, all of that will be linked down below in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.